I always roll or brush the edges first with cutting it and then obviously roll after. It's basically to avoid your brush lines, so you, you blend it in. If you put normal paint straight onto this, it's literally coming off. It sits on top with your watered down mist coat, sucks it in and then it causes like a barrier for you to put obviously your normal paint on. If you just get normal white paint, pull it on, it's not seeped in, it sits on top of your wall. You know, just peel it. And then obviously when I cut it in, and then I use a mini roller to get rid of the brush lines. It just helps it blend in. So you always overlap your brush lines when you're cutting in with your current colour you're having at the top of the edge of the ceiling. Once you've brushed it, always roll it with a mini roller and it just helps hide any brush lines better. You just want it to dry like natural. Uh, I did this second coat on these walls. If you put like a heater literally right up next to it, it'll dry out too quick and just crack. Always seal in first, then you do your cutting on all your walls. Roll it all, undercoat your woodwork and then satin wood. Never do your ceiling after your walls. Obviously when you cut in and you're rolling, you get all the splatter and it'll end up getting on all your fresh walls and then you've got to redo your walls. Is there ever a time you would want to paint the skirting boards first? No, nah, never do it. If I'm waiting for the walls to dry or I wanted to get into another room a bit quicker, I would undercoat the woodwork. Wouldn't satin wood it, because obviously that's your final finish where you undercoat, that's just to give it a good base, basically. I'll get my brush. Obviously, I'll load the paint onto the wall away from it first. My favourite is Prodac which is what brewers have given me to use. Go back onto it where you've just loaded, and then obviously you slice down your edging for your cutting in. All it basically does is take the excess off. Too much on your brush, it's gonna end up throwing it all onto your current colour. I like to use 18 inch rollers. 18 inch ones are in okay. there, that big massive one. I use them for ceilings, solely because obviously your neck, you like this all day, you don't want to be getting injuries. Walls, it varies if it's a nice big room, if it's empty, I do like to use 18 inch rollers, but 12 inch are just, just as good really. Uh, so you put tape around that roller by the way? Basically gets all the um, loose fibres. If you don't do it, you'll end up picking all the little bits out of your wall basically as you go along. So it's just easier to quickly put some tape on and it pulls off any loose bits. Put some good tape over it, just, just pull it on and then pull it off and you'll see little fibres on it. It just stops any bits onto your walls, that's yeah. all it does. So. Could you cut in and paint the wall on two separate days? <laughs> on your first coat, not your second coat. If you then went round and cut in, left it a few days and then rolled, you'd see the difference. It's called like window framing. So you'll see where your outer edge is, but I always roll. Once I brush this in a minute, I roll with my mini roller, yeah. and that gets rid of any brush lines. And then when you roll, with your big roller, it all matches and blends in. So with, with your mist coat, you wanna try and just cover every general position possible. When you're painting, your actual colours, cutting first as you normally do and then mini roller the cutting lines and then when you put your paint on as long as you obviously go from top to bottom afterwards just to level everything out you've got no issues it's when you start trying to skip things and do it really fast then you can miss bits and it can look uneven. Obviously I have an extendable mini roller which can get all the way to the back of your ra old radiators, but with the new design, a lot of them now for the modernising have gaps all the way through. So with your long extendable mini roller, you can actually get all the way through from both sides and diagonal. 
and you can actually cover the whole lot. Obviously, if you didn't prep, if there is cracks or lumps and bumps, obviously with your fresh paint, it's gonna show more than old paint because it dulls. Also, you could have grease on it or you could have stains on it. For example, you have a water leak, that was on a wall. You can't just paint directly over it. You have to seal it first with a stain block. Let that fully dry and cure, and then you're good to paint, obviously, on top.